hello. <laughs> I said hello. So today I'm actually going to be discussing, and sorry about the mask, but I have to wear it. Um, today I'm going to be discussing prototyping and prototyping specifically in Adobe XD versus Figma versus Principle and versus Sketch. And there's a lot of other programs out there that you can do prototyping, but I'm mostly going to be kind of concentrating on those particular programs. So stay tuned and enjoy. So definitely for sure in the design process, there's uh, quite a bit of process involved, starting from um, research till to um, kind of doing the, U the UX part and figure out the wireframes and the laying things out. Definitely out of all the, out of that entire process, definitely my favorite part is prototyping and I love it, I love it very much. And what is, so what is prototyping? You know, it could obviously, it could be different things, but for, 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 the, for this particular video, for what I'm talking about, when I'm, when I'm talking about prototyping, I'm talking about a very high fidelity, very re realistic end result. So it's pretty much not just a flat file, but an interactive, an interactive file in an, in an interactive way to show either a decision maker, a developer, or um, other uh, people that need to that need to see this uh, this file, so they could make uh, so we can make some decisions, and so I can better explain what I'm trying to accomplish. Whether it's um, trying to make a button look a certain way when it's clicked on or tapped on or showing what a navigation would look like when there's when something drops down. And a lot of times it would be like showing developers ideas so they don't have to make uh, decisions uh, as far as how something would animate, how things would move. They could pretty much just kind of see what that looks like in the, in the prototyping uh, file. Um, and then that way they can, they, they can, that way they can be better concentrate on the development aspects. And pretty much for about the last five or six years, I've been using Sketch for most of my product design, pretty much for all my product design. Most recently I moved to Figma, but really speaking about Sketch for now, Sketch hasn't really had any kind of prototyping in it within it. I've uh, usually exported files from Sketch into InVision and I would do the prototyping stuff in there. About two years ago, a year ago, from the, the, the time that this is being filmed, Sketch did have some prototyping tools that they added within itself, but they haven't been um, they haven't been very good and they haven't been that strong. And speaking of Figma, pretty much my most favorite, currently my most favorite tool that I moved from Sketch, as I mentioned. Actually, I moved from Sketch to Figma about three, four months ago and has been an amazing ride. I've loved using it. And yeah, it's such a powerful program. And within, within Figma itself, they have a prototyping capabilities as well and they actually the prototyping itself is pretty good to be honest with you it's a pretty good prototyping you are able to go from screen to screen if it's like a website you're able to go from the home page to like a um to a to a contact page or to whatever pages you want to have in there and you're able to show um small little interactions of what buttons would look like when you tap on them within the page or what navigations would look like so it's pretty good um it's not it's not necessarily the smoothest when you're tapping on stuff. It's not hyper realistic. It looks it looks realistic, but the animations themselves are not exactly as realistic as they would look when you when you're possibly when it's in an app format or when it's in a website format. But definitely, that's my favorite tool for product design, and it's um, it's something that I would usually use for for prototyping as well, unless I have to do something uh, very special. Another very popular tool is Adobe XD. And I'm sure you've heard of this tool. Uh, it's, it's a very, very powerful product tool uh, for, to, for creating products like uh, apps and websites similar to, similar to Sketch and to Figma. And they really, when they started off a few years ago, it was a very kind of not the best program necessarily. And um, it's, uh, but it's really moved up and it's really has, has really gone up in, in the quality uh, pretty much to me from from my understanding from what I've seen it's pretty much almost as good as Figma even though Figma is still my favorite tool but it's pretty pretty good and I feel like it might even reach go above it and become better eventually since they have Adobe to back them up and they do have prototyping built in into their into their uh, into that tool itself and the prototyping there is pretty good maybe even a little bit better than Figma's uh, the, the animations are fairly smooth and things are fairly realistic for the most part it's pretty much like Figma but maybe just a little more smoother 
Obviously things are gonna work a little bit different, a tiny bit different, but for the most part, pretty similar. So that's another one for potentially to check out. Now I wanted to mention Principle. So Principle is my favorite prototyping tool. It is super amazing. I've loved using this tool. I've used it now for, I don't know, maybe two, three years. And it's something that I used to use in congruence with Sketch when I wanted to make hyper-realistic prototypes. What I mean by hyper-realistic is not just something you, you cl click on or tap on and it just kind of goes to the next screen, but really realistic animations, having stuff very, very smooth, and having things get adjusted depending on, uh, depending on time. Sorry about this water. <laughs> Some sprinkles down there. But as I was saying, something very hyper-realistic. And also I can work, there's also something in there called components. And basically with the components, what I could do with the components is I can have micro interactions within other interactions. So for example, if I have like a, like a button, like a button where I, like a little widget that I turn something on and something off, that could just live within, within that file. So if I click that, it won't, it won't have to go to the next file, it just lives within it. Basically having embedded, embedded files within other files. I just have to duck because there's trees here. I'm a pretty tall guy. <laughs> um, so, so it's very powerful principle and um, I'm able to I'm able to kind of uh, create if I'm let's say if I'm doing like an app or something like that I can have the app directly live on directly be an iPhone or Android but let's talk about a iPhone for example and I can it feels extremely realistic I can have things animate as I'm tapping um, things will move buttons will move it's just super super realistic if I created if I just copied like a like Airbnb or some, some other apps that exist as apps, I can literally copy those exact apps and all their animations and live on the phone and it'll look hyper, it'll look super realistic and it'll look the same as how they've done it. I have all the controls. My favorite tool, the one con, sorry if I'm blabbering about this, but I'm very passionate about prototyping. A little bit of a con to principle and just makes it a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a work but it's definitely worth it when you really want to impress either your clients or impress people at your company or whoever whoever you're showing these designs to. Um, the thing with it is that it's a separate, it's a standalone program, right? So that means you would have to create your assets or your product design in, you would have to create those in pretty much Sketch or Figma or another place, usually Sketch or Figma. I think, yeah, principle is compatible with either Sketch or Figma. So I would create my product design in, let's say, Figma, and then and then import those in into Principle, right? Whereas like, whereas in Sketch or Figma, you can create all your designs there, and do the prototyping in one tool. So that's just something to consider when you're thinking about this stuff. But I highly, highly, highly recommend Principle. I mentioned earlier that I've that back in the days I would use Envision with. Sketch or I would use sketch with Envision, right? Because sketch there really was no other way to do prototyping or Or not really any good ways to do it. There was there was a couple other options that I could that existed as well I mean, there's a lot of other tools that existed But that was the best way to do it and that was a way that a lot of people did things they would use it. They would create Design in sketch and then import that into into Envision and Envision lives online and still exists It's still it's still a program that a lot of people use very popular you just give links to people and they have access to your prototypes. And it's something that was really good five, four or five years ago, but I have just really haven't seen too many um, improvements, specifically in InVision. So it's just something that exists. InVision as a company did themselves come up with a, with an application with a product called InVision Studio, which really had a lot of potential when it first came out. But from my understanding and from what I have from my experience from using it, it's just a little bit of a slow program. Similar, it's very much like Sketch, very much like Figma and, and XD. The only thing is that it just seems a little bit slow as using it. And they also have prototyping built in and it's not bad, it's fairly smooth. Kind of reminds me of XD a little bit, the type of, the type of way, that, the way that they do it, the way that they do things, kind of you could control the timing in the prototypes. And by timing, I mean like when a, when a button rolls over, you can actually control how fast that happens and the speed and the smoothing and things like that. But I definitely, I definitely haven't used it too much. I didn't, have, didn't really like using it because 
because of the speed the speed part it was just kind of too slow for me if you watch some of my other videos uh, definitely Webflow is something I've talked about in the past a lot and I know I, I know it wasn't in the intro that I'll be talking about but I just remember the Webflow is a good one to mention as well definitely you can create very realistic prototypes in there as well and they're all like fully it's just programmed it's you know obviously using code so it's a little more challenging but that's just something else to look at when you're thinking about doing prototyping and creating some realistic prototypes just wanted to briefly mention that also one. all these prototyping tools actually all these product tools that have prototyping built in or standalone prototyping tools they also all for the most part have links that you can you know create the prototype and you can send off links to either your clients or decision makers or developers whoever needs to see them can um, take a look at them whether it's all those people i just mentioned or maybe even your grandma or your mom or whoever whoever needs to see those those files or those links they'll have full access with them through um just just having a having a live link i hope that was helpful for you to kind of see uh, me discuss some of my uh, prototyping tools and see some of my comparisons and some opinions of what I think and you, know, you see that I'm wearing my my mask in these in these uh, interesting times that we're living in right now and I just kind of want to record my video outside I'm actually recording with a kind of a new camera that I'm trying it's called the Sony ZV-1 I am not a Sony person for 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 cameras I'm more of a Canon person but I just really heard that this camera is really, really good for this style of shooting. And you can see the depth of field in the background, how stuff is kind of blurry and stuff like that. Uh, normally you wouldn't, you wouldn't get this kind of effect like with your phone. I'm shooting at a 1.8 aperture. Anyways, I'm, you're, the, most people that are listening to this video are not really demographic for photography. But I just wanted to mention that if you're liking, I'd like to know your opinion, like what you think as far as the quality of this video um, and this kind of this camera that I'm using as well also if you have any opinions or um if you use some if you if you maybe have some uh, experience using certain uh, certain prototyping tools that i've mentioned here also you could mention that we can have a little conversation about it or what you think about principle or figma or xd as far as uh, prototyping uh, usage uh, feel free to leave a comment and uh, we can discuss and also if you are enjoying uh, these these types of videos and are liking um, this type of stuff that I'm recording uh, feel free to um, subscribe to me if you already haven't or like my uh, video as well a little thumbs up is appreciated and I will be looking forward and seeing you in my next video and um, have a good uh, have a good one <laughs> see ya